and then offers it a prophet. So, and and um, prophets, why? Because somebody say order. order. But I have to, because it's interesting, I had this dream. And I, I, y'all heard me say this. I, I, um, I was walking and God gave me this vision. And God is, you know, God is like, he's not releasing me from the vision. He's, he wants to expound on it because it has a lot to do with what he's doing. Amen? Yeah. It has a lot to do with what he is doing. Um, and I, I, I want to share the vision with you a little bit. Um, in the vision, there was, um, I saw a young child. I saw a woman and I saw a man, everybody with me, like a family. And then I saw the young child begin to go backwards. It began to go backwards, like we went from, let's say it was like six or seven years old, it rolled back like six, five, four, three, two, one, and it became a seed, and then it went right back into the womb. Amen? And then I saw the woman, when the seed was in her, she began to roll backwards. So she rolled backwards, like let's say, oh, maybe 20, 30, she rolled back until she became a real. And I thought that was so interesting that in the, in the vision, she didn't become a seed, she became a real. Amen? And then she went back into the man. And then the man began to roll backwards. Amen? He began to roll backwards, backwards, until he became dust. And he was in the hands of God. Amen? The dust was in the hands of God. And I want to start this this way because God is a God of order. And that was God's, uh, that is God's word. If I say order. 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 And and God wants to talk about this because um, he, it, we, we have to know what God is doing when he's restoring, when he's building, amen? We got to understand that. So I want you to, as I said, this foundation way first, because we, you know, God will do it. We you know we got the way God will want it to be done. Um, I want you to turn, I mean, with your Bibles, um, go to Genesis with me real quick. Let's go to Genesis. Uh, go to the second chapter. Does anybody, does the vision I just spoke to you, is there anything that stands out to someone in the classroom about that vision I just gave you? Anything that stands out to you, anyone? But we let her come to the, you know, the process. Okay, so this is the order how we do things from social um, the media team. Come on here. So you were talking about the order, and you said you saw the vision of the man, the woman, and the child, and that's God's original order because Adam came first, then came Eve, and then came the seed out of um, Eve. So well, not well, you know how you say, but it's the original order how God meant for things to be. That's what I saw. So she said the original order. Now I want before we go on, I want to I want to establish this. Um, while I was laying with God, laying, you know, just laying meditating in my time with the presence of God this morning, I wrote it like this: the substance to my hope. I want to say substance to your hope. Because your your I mean, you know your hope gotta have some substance to it. Amen. Because if you have no substance to your hope, then you feel hopeless. Amen. 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 It's, and this is what God gave me this morning. The substance to my hope is the word of God. Everybody rejoice. Come on, somebody should rejoice in it. The substance to your hope has to be the word of God. Now, I want you, I'm, I'm in order. The Holy Spirit is leading. I'm just doing the way God wanted to be done. Remember, we started, well, I'm starting this out with understanding order, right? But the substance to your and my hope has to be the word of God. Amen? I'm going to finish it. He says, the substance to my hope is the word of God. His word shall not return empty. So the substance to my hope is the word of God. But it is a word that cannot return empty. So because my hope is in the substance of the word, what I'm hoping in cannot return empty. Oh, somebody going to be with me. Amen? What I'm hoping in can't 
return empty, but it must profit. Am I right? It must be in alignment with what? The word of God. It must be in alignment with the word of God. What I'm hoping in cannot return empty because the substance to my hope has the power to fulfill what he said. Amen? There's a reason why God has me, where are we going here? He says, the substance to my hope is the word of God. His word shall not return empty. That's why I fight the good fight of faith. Come on, somebody. You're fighting the good fight of faith because you know what you are standing on. Your hope is in that which cannot return empty. So you are fighting. I want everybody to get it. Say, I'm fighting. I'm fighting, I'm fighting a good fight of faith. I'm fighting faith. Come by what? Here he what? The word of God. And that's where my hope is. Amen? Amen. My hope is in the word of God. I'm going to tell you something that's what's, what's really scary. A scary thing I was thinking about this. Uh, like, I was thinking about this. To have your hope in something that God never said. That's scary. Amen. To be waiting a long period of time for something God never said. To be believed. That's the highest level of deception. Amen. The highest level of deception is to believe God said something that he never said. And you're sitting there with an expectation of it. Amen. 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 Let me just give you an illustration. I remember a woman, I remember a situation in this woman. We, me and my wife walked in the house one time and they were, they were prophesying about, um, they were talking in the spiritual realm. And um, it was over this prop, this lady, she was a prop, this house. And they were prophesying in the spiritual realm that, um, that who, who, who this person's husband was going to be, one lady in there. And my wife, when she went in there, she picked it up in the spiritual realm. And she named the person, right? She named the person they were talking about. I Meaning it was in the room. Because I mean, you know, when you walk, because when you walk in the midst of a room, if you are sensitive to the spirit, especially if God is near that gift, you're going to pick up some stuff. Amen. So she picked, and she told them who they were talking about. They didn't tell them. So watch this. They may have thought because she told them that that was God. You know what I'm saying? They thought it was confirmation. But now it wasn't confirmation. It was confirmation that my wife was discerning their conversation. Remember, let me tell you the scripture. The Bible says that Jesus knew what was in their heart. Jesus had the ability to discern the, um, the, what you're speaking about would come from your, from your heart and didn't come from God's heart. You know what I'm saying? So what happened in that situation was that woman was sitting there thinking all this time, that woman thought a long period of time that that was her husband. But what was messed up is that I know the guy they talked about, he got engaged and married somebody else. So, if the false word goes out and you begin to conceive it and you're waiting, it can cripple you in your walk. Amen? Amen. How many of you know? I'm about, I'm about to show you because from the beginning, we're going back to the beginning, it crippled you in your walk. Because why? You were believing for something. That God never saved. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say both. You believe it for something God never said. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says his word does not return for Amen. 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 Now, now there, there are times you also can go make something happen off your word. Because the Bible said in Genesis 11, there is nothing impossible for man. God, we, we, I'm setting, God is setting this stage for where we get ready to go, okay? There's nothing impossible. So I wrote, we, so I, I need to know my hope, the substance to my hope is in the word of God. Shall not return empty, that I might fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. So I can obtain a good report. Look at somebody say, I want to obtain a good report. I want to obtain a good report. How many know a good report is when you establish something and a good report is that what you established, it came back just like you say, that's a good report. Come on, say, somebody say, say, God, you want a good report out of you. Say, you ought to desire a good report when you begin to speak. 
You are with me, right? That, I'm just giving you scripture. It's all scripture. I'm just giving out how God had me. How, how God had me. So I heard, I heard um Omara say, what what, what you said, Mara? You said um original order. Original order. Y'all got this going so good, isn't it? So if we look up at things now, it may appear that God is not being obtained a good report. Uh, see, somebody get what I'm saying. In other words, a lot of times things can look crazy when you are standing. That's why you got to fight. It doesn't mean God didn't say it. Now, let me, let me tell you what I, I, I let, me, let me finish what I wrote. The substance to my hope is the word of God. Shall not return empty. That, that's why I fight the good fight of faith. So I can, uh, so I can obtain a good report. Then I wrote at the end, he's coming. Mm. I wrote at the end, somebody gonna get, come on, I know I got some prophecy, prophecy. He coming. Amen. So, if I'm a prophet, a prophet, if anybody got, I know that God, who's, who can't say, his substance is in his word. My hope lies in his word. Amen. Amen. My hope lies in what he said. Because I know what he said cannot return. Come on, somebody say what he said. It cannot return for. It cannot return. Somebody, somebody say empty. 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 It's not going to return empty. So when things are looking all gravy and looking all good or looking all like this is not happening, <laughs> I have to fight the good fight of faith because I know it's happening. Amen. Let me give you an example. I'm, I'm going to tell you something what God asked me. They was, I was, when he said this, folks, I thought it was kind of strange that he said this to me. It was like, he says, do you think I take time off and days off like man to stop doing what I'm doing? I'm about to mess you. God is about to mess you. Do you think God will say, oh, it's Mother's Day, so I'm not going to build today? Or it's Christmas, so I'm not going to. In other words, God is not subject to our holidays. Oh, and let me tell you how you showed it to me, prophets and prophets. Let me show you how you showed it to uh, those in the house ministers. He showed it to me this way. Do you think Noah ever stopped building? Do you think Noah ever allowed what was going on in the world to dictate how he was building? I'm just telling you what God was showing me. God was showing me. He said, he said, if no one would have stopped building to go, let's say they, because you know back in the day they could have had some things, you know that, that I'm sure they had holidays and things they was doing and situations they was doing it. And you know, they were in, you know, there was probably, you know, all kind of things going on in society. I bet Moses would, I mean, nobody would consider this home I was probably not really social. He would have been considered somebody who was probably really not really a part of what society and the flow was going on because they could have been having celebrating things and celebrating that. And Noah was continuously building because his substance, um, his hope was in the word of God. And he knows that word. He knows that word cannot return word. Boy. Empty. Right? So he got to fight this. Why are you fighting the good fight of faith? Because people are going to look at you and judge you and speak all that evil when you won't allow yourself to get caught up and entangled with the cares of the affairs of the world. They're going to say you're doing too much. Hmm. I'm just giving it like God giving it to you. They're going to say you're doing but you know, look at someone say, you know, yeah. come on, declare you, know. you know, say, you know, that he comes. You know he comes. And you and I know that we need to be in his presence. We need to be in his presence. Why? To be alert to what he is doing. Amen. I want y'all to understand something. This is not a good word. This is the truth. Amen. I wrote what God gave me. And I kept saying, I kept saying it to myself. The substance, I kept saying my substance, um, the substance to my hope. Because 
You have to have hope. In a time where you hear all kinds of things going on, you must have hope. Satan is a hope stealer. Come on, come on. People are drinking because they don't have hope. People are getting drunk, are getting high because they don't have hope. People are jumping from one partner to another partner, etc., because they don't have hope. People are taking side deals because they don't have Oh. But my hope is in the word of God. Amen. He is the substance to my hope. He is why I believe I'm going to be all right. Amen. He is why I believe you believe you're going to be all right. Amen. Say that? Amen. No matter what's coming at you, young man, no matter what God's coming at you, your hope is in the word. The Bible says, He who has begun a good works in you, that He is faithful to keep you until the coming of the Lord. So my hope is in the word. So the energy is shooting dots repeatedly at me, talking about I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. But my hope, why He can't conquer me because He can't steal my hope. Because my hope is in the word of God. And God says he watches over his word that it shall not, cannot, and will not return void. It shall prosper in that which he has sent it to do. Amen. 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 My hope is in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. All else is as seeking sin. Amen. Mm. But I'm a fight. Somebody say, look, somebody say, fight. The good, fight the good fight of faith. The word that I have, I must fight with. Guess who the first person you're going to be fighting with? Oh, somebody get me. Who are you going to be fighting with? The Bible says that the flesh wars against the Come on, people. The flesh wars against the Spirit. And the spirit was against them. Flesh. God trying to tell you something. You saying God, I get you. Because people won't agree with you. Because yeah. it appears odd in this time. I remember when God began to say apostle. I was like, I don't know what apostle is. Come on, come on. And then he used the prophet to declare them. I'm like, like, well, um, then he came in and Back to, I'm like, well, um, and then he showed me when you accept the title, he allowed me to feel the hatred that's going to come along with it. So at that point, I went around a little while and it was like, hey, what's your, I said, this is my pastor already. I'm like, my pastor already, no one that God would say, I ain't want to say it around the prophet. I ain't want to say it about the seat. They don't look at, because they, 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 they be knowing what you like. But why are you still calling yourself pastor already when God said I shift your office? Because I don't want that fire. Come on, come on. I, I don't want that fire. I don't want what people think. I don't want to fight. Come on. Amen. Mm, you got it. I don't want to fight. God has told you something, but I don't want to fight. So I'm not going to even declare it. So now you wonder why you're confused. Because confusion comes when you're torn between two decisions. Confusion comes when you're torn between what God has said and what you worry about what people say. Or what people think. Amen? But God has designed. I want you to point your hand in there like this. Then point at yourself. Say, God has designed me for purpose. God has designed me for purpose. You know, Jesus would get them hot when he would tell them he was the son of God. They ain't mind doing the miracles. But when he told them who he was, they said, kill him. People start talking about him. Even people who was walking with him start talking about him. This guy, this cat and lost his mind. He called this is this is this is what's the little word they use? Um blasphemy. this is blasphemy. Who is he to compare himself to God talking to somebody today? He's talking to all of us today. Amen. 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 And this has to do with order. Because if you look at the wine of order, you're going to catch fire. If you begin to speak what God says in the time that we, but I have to speak it. Mm -hmm. amen? amen. As an apostle, one as a son, I'm a son. Amen. amen. 
uh, uh, redeemed, uh, no, forgiven by the blood, uh, washed by the word, right? Sealed by the spirit and, and given the office of an apostle. I don't care what people say. There's no uh, apostles. Don't I know you're lying because I know God already told you. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to. Like, but do you want to fight? See, anybody noticing what we're talking about tonight gives a little new meaning to when he said fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. See, if you listen to what he's saying, fight the good fight of faith because you, if you don't understand what he's saying, the fight, the, 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 you got to fight the good fight. You got to fight where your hope is. Your hope is where your substance is. You got to, that's where the word is. What God, you have to fight through what God has said to you. But I found this out though. To be a great fighter, you got to be in the presence of a great fighter. Amen. Amen. See, if you're in the presence of if you're in the presence of the enemy, you you take L's. He always losing. He like you know the enemy like to dress up like he got a good fight game. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen people when they go into basketball? Couldn't care if they got on basketball shorts, they got on a headband, they got on this. They look like they they coming on there like they can ball. They got on Jordans, and when you go to ball, they they, they, they ball on the ground. They like. You're like, bro, but you, you, you come out here looking like you about to hit 15 three-pointer. And that can't, he looked like that. God said, I'm tired of people just look like they did. But they ain't got no fight in them. They ain't got no fight in them. Mm. But God says, I want to show you this area. Or do, are y'all with me? Yeah. I, I want to show you this area. Watch it. Okay. And because we got to understand that God, if God is telling us, I can obtain a good, rep a, 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 good uh, uh, a good report, right? I'm going to obtain a good report. Then God's word must obtain a good report. Amen? Because a lie is not a good report. So he's coming. But there's some things that God is getting in order. How many of us are noticing that all out the blue, it ain't out, it's not out the blue, it's just coming out of the blue, that even Roe versus Wade is now being contested? I would listen to some people talk about it. It was like, people were like, man, this is, this is, let me tell you what a woman said today. I'm giving this, this lady, she said, this is so, this is so prophetic. She said, she said, she didn't know she was being prophetic. She just was a, she said, this thing right here gonna tell whose side you really on. Kind of remind me of when King Nebuchadnezzar had the statue and it had to, it came to a place to now reveal whose side you really on. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's going to show whose side you on. And it starts with the seed. Y'all, Exactly. Somebody's gonna get it. God is establishing the fight on whose side you're on by the sea. Now, we've been in the garden, y'all. We've been not told now. We've been in the garden, right? God told us that you are the ground, and He told us that He planted a garden in you, and that garden came from the sea above. He said, Now, like the woman said, we're gonna see whose side you're on. We're gonna see what you're rooted in. What you're grounded in. Because God even told me, say, you're in political office. God says, change a lot of times. Yes, God showed me this. He said, change. He said, some of the most major change came from his children rising up in political office. Esther, political office. The three Hebrew boys, political office. Yes, political office. Daniel, political office. Moses, confronted, political office. Joshua, Joseph, political office. Changing laws, changing, the causing a what the magnitude of the showdown had kings and and people in the showdown saying, Your God is God. I say it's time. Uh, no, y'all they, they ain't hearing me. It's time for God to say, Whose side are you on? What seed is actually planted? Because, like the woman of God said when she stood up, see, you ain't got to God be prophesied, you don't even know you prophesied. He be speaking in the clearing, you don't even know you declaring. The woman said, the, the, uh, what you, Apostle, what you're talking about is the order. What you say? Original order. Order of answer. Going to the order. Because 
if the order does not be fulfilled, then God don't obtain a good report. Mm, somebody, if the order does not be it's not established, then God does not obtain a good report. And how I many you know God gonna get a good report? Amen. Mm. Let's look. Let's go forward. Let's go forward for a minute. Matthew 7 says what? I'm, I'm sorry. Genesis 7, 2 says what? Genesis 2, verse 7 says what? Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. Say it again. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. Look at somebody said, that's creative design. That's creative design. Take that's original. That's original. No debate, no arguing, no, you can say what people can say what they remember. I said, fight the good fight of faith. Man design came from who? God. It also came. I said, who did he design first? Man. Don't say it low. Let's come on. We got to be real up in here now. Who did he design first? I know this ain't gonna be popular. I know people ain't gonna want this. This don't this, this don't diminish anyone. It just establishes order. I know that people like, well, okay. <laughs> but 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 no, no, he established me. If I'm a prophet, I want to make that I cannot deviate from God's original order. Why? Because when I'm fighting, when I'm fighting, I'm fighting for God to have a good report. I can't fight for God to have a good report. I can't fight for God to have a good report. I can't fight for God to have a good report if I don't know his order. Amen. Amen. So God established me. Everybody with me? And he fought, so he's a creator. <laughs> man, let's not look at man as he all that because he's talking about he's playing in the dirt. Amen. He talk, he's forming man from the dirt. Everybody understand? When you dig up somebody today, what do you find? Dirt. The dust from the dust they came. So he is faithful. Go ahead. Universe. He said he formed man. Um, yes, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? Life. life. Now man is what? A living soul. So now it's God and who? Man. man. Let's, let's go to verse, stay in chapter 2, and go to verse 21. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam, and mm. he slept. So who put Adam to sleep? God. God. The Bible said he caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and Adam Slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. And he took what? Ribs. He took one of his ribs. ribs. What does the rib cover? The heart. The heart. The mm -hmm. lungs. He took that which protects the heart. Mm. Some y'all, some y'all get that. You, you know, the heart is the intellect, the emotions, and the desires. Mm. He took that. That protects the heart. And go ahead and read. Um, sorry, it was a thought, it was something that Amara said, so I just wanted to add. Is it okay? Okay, so oh, you gotta stick to the same. Don't be doing all that. Come on. Come on. Um, so one of our sisters actually is studying um, in the medical field. So when Apostle asked, what does the rib cover? 
Um, we said the heart, and she also said and the lungs. And so I just thought that was powerful because we just read that God breathed breath into the man. So I don't know, it was just like it's covering the heart, but it's also covering, protecting the, the, the breath. The breath, the soul. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Come on, Amen. Amen. So the heart and the soul. Now, what did God do with the red? Okay. Okay. Verse 22. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. Mm, say it again. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman. Now I want us to get this. He did not go back into the dirt to make woman. Though he did go back into the dirt. Y'all somebody gonna get it. He went into the dirt, but he went into established dirt. Yeah. Amen. What is established dirt? Dirt that has been formed for a purpose. In other words, Adam was no longer just dirt. He's a garden now. He's formed with purpose. He's ready, positioned to receive something. Yeah. Birth is something. Amen. He has a word spoken over him that's birth is something. So when you have a word over you, birth is something. You have the power to birth something. Somebody gonna get what I just said. When you have a word over you that's birthing something, guess what? God can position you to pull something out of you. If you don't have a seed, you can't give it. That's why the Bible says He gives seed to the soul. Why? Because if you don't have a seed, how you gonna give somebody else a seed? If you look at the process of order, the child rolled back into a seed and went back into the womb. Amen. The seed went. And then the seed of the woman went back and came a rib and went back into the man. We're trying to fight and don't even understand. We're trying to fight and don't understand order. That means you can be fighting for foolishness and fighting for what you perceive your purpose. And God says, no, I'm the one in this wants to do report. I need you fighting for my purpose. Amen. If I'm the substance to your faith, then I need you fighting what I've spoken over you so people can see my glory. I know that you're messing with up because you're going to begin to discern that there are people who are fighting. But it ain't really about God's purpose. Mm. They're fighting about self-establishing. Wow. Establishing themselves. Hmm. Amen? But the creator created man. And out of man, he poured woman. Kiri, this is going to be good. Come on. And he brought her to the man. Mm -hmm. And who? Who they were? And he, the Lord, brought her, the woman, to the man. The first father to walk his daughter down the aisle was God. The first father to walk his daughter down the aisle was God. Adam, sleep. God, working on that masterpiece. He ain't, what's funny about it, he ain't asking Adam about nothing what he built. But what he is building is a part of who Adam is. Somebody gonna get what I'm just saying. He's not consulting Adam, but he brought her out of Adam. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he's the creator. Amen. He knows what he designed Adam for. So he, he knows what he had designed Adam for. So he don't have to consult Adam because he don't pull out of Adam. So whatever, y'all gotta get this. Everybody get this. Whatever he pulled out of Adam is to help Adam what he designed Adam for. Amen. Whatever. Whatever he poured out of Adam was not meant to fight against Adam. Yes. That's my God. That's was not meant to go to war with Adam. Was not, oh, I got a word for you. Was not meant to take Adam's place. Yes. What he poured out of Adam uh, is, and, and what he poured out of Adam is all oh, she is wise too. Yes. 
understand this. You will never call anybody to help you that does not that is not highly skilled and able to complete a task. Women are not insignificant. They are very significant in God's plan and his original plan. Amen? Amen. Now, we, I, want, I want y'all to get this. God created. The Bible says Adam was in his dust. In his hands. Dust was in his hand. Somebody tell me who God is. Say it again. So love is created. Man, to be in his image and out in his life. Somebody just got it. Love is creating that which he is calling to be in his image and out in his life. Remember I told you earlier when we were talking that we're going to talk about that it's his presence that changed me. It was God's presence that changed me. But God's presence, there are three components. There are many components, but I want you to get these things. According to how God is being depicted or being described, God is spirit. Everybody say spirit. spirit. John was a God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in what? Spirit. And in truth. So you need to be. So when you are in the presence, you are in the presence of spirit. When you are in the presence of God, you are in the presence of spirit. spirit. In truth. Amen? Amen. And the conflict a lot of times when you're in that presence is your flesh. Carnality. Amen? The Bible says God is the light to all men. So in God's presence, you're, you, now you're going to have the ability to see what's extremely important to God. You're going to be able to see what lines up with God's plan and what he's doing. Somebody said, that's why we got practice rising up. To be able to see what God is doing. To be able to be sent to a people and say you are out of line with what God is doing. How do I know this? I've been in his God is spirit and he is light and he is love. God is love. Now you are in the presence of unlimited. Who can know the depths, the heights, the width, the length of this love? Amen. So spirit, love, truth is forming man to be like him. And out of man, he poured woman to be like him. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Go ahead. I'm going somewhere with this. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam saw the oneness. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you where this teaching is coming from the day where God was, what God is going. I don't know if it was. This teaching is are we called as men and women in the kingdom? Are we walking as one in the unified body? Or are we walking against one another? Mm-hmm. See, we want to talk about warfare, but God began to deal with me. The beginning of warfare is the two that came to create everything. If God, if if if, if Amara is correct and she is according to the word of God, then would not God bring that back into order? And if one of us, man or woman, who are now being in the light and the spirit of love of God, would he not yearn? Would he not have hope? To see that in order. Instead of people breaking out, talking about, you know what, my ministry, or this and that, and people breaking out, talking about, women talking about this, and men talking about this, and people talking about this, as if the body is divided. That which creates the body, man and woman, 
happening, man and woman, were at one point one coming out of each other. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, when a fucking when a, when a man get married, he said, hey, no man will hate his own body. He was trying, he was getting us to see something. God says, when you're married, if you hate your own body, if you hate your wife, you hate your own body. And God was trying to get us to see is if you are my body and you hate the arm or the leg, you hate your own body. If you in the body and you hate, you're going around talking about your tolerate, you, you're talking about, well, I'm going to go to this church over here, but when I go to this church over here, I got things in my heart about the man of God over here, or I'm going to go with this over here, and I got things in my heart about the Lord of God over here. God said, this is unacceptable dysfunction. Amen. And the world cannot see my blood. You can't go to another house and escape God's order. Amen. And God uses, he has things in his word to bring that into order. For men of God, he got on your position or whatever. He got on here. He's aligning up with my word. See, listen, this is the foolishness that's going on. The hand saying, I don't need the arm. And the arm saying, I don't need the shoulder. And we don't need each other, but we don't understand that we're deviating from God's order. And therefore, we're deviating from God. How can God get a good report? Because his word is not being fought for it to be lined up in the manner he decided, desired to be. Amen? Amen. And yet, let me tell you what's funny. And we think we can just keep on going. Like God going to say, how I many of y'all know that God is the kind, that God is kind of God when he starts, especially when he raised a prophet. You know why? Because when God began to raise a prophet, he's in a trash and I do. Yeah. Y'all didn't hear me. Thank you for what I just said. Go study your Bible. When God began to raise a prophet, he getting ready to trash an ideal and begin to, begin to establish what he's saying. Read Jeremiah, he did it. Am I right, prophet? He did it. Uh, Isaac, he did it. He did it. When God, uh, he, uh, he began to say, okay, I'm going to have them preach. How long should, I'm going to have my prophet speak. How long are you going to speak until you see the desolation come? What are you saying? Until you see I destroy that, they don't want to be lined up with what I'm calling. But see, watch this, uh, uh, Elder. When God does that, he has to what? Cause us an obvious separation. Come on, Moses. There's an obvious separation. Moses came back down. Moses said, Who's side you on? Okay, okay, I don't left for a while. My presence was gone for a while. My presence was gone, Moses. I had him in the mountain for a while. I come back and you took the things I gave you out of the world and start building with the world. You took the things that I gave you out of the world, the wealth that I gave you, and started building statues because you went what? You didn't understand. You didn't, you, you couldn't feel my presence. My presence, got somebody get it. My presence was in Moses, and my presence was gone. Because uh, 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 my presence was gone, I gave you gold from Egypt, but I come back and realize that you took what I gave you in the world and began to build idols. Tell me that we're not doing it today. God has given us the wealth, of, and yet we have built idols with it. Because we're not desiring his presence. No. We're building idols with it. And we're worshiping those. How could Beyonce ever be a woman as, as, as a model, role model for you as a woman? How could that ever be? If you understand God's original plan, you would love her so much that you would be on your face crying out that God would save her soul instead of desiring to be with like her. But the only reason you, some people desire to be like her because you envy. But the Bible tells you not to envy the wicked. And don't get, don't, don't, don't get upset because I call it we was all wicked. But I said, do not envy the wicked. Why would you envy someone that's dying, that's dead in their sins? But God is saying, don't sit there and look at her Pray for her, intercede, cry out, and spare not. Why? Because you know my order, and you know I'm coming. You know my report tells you that I'm coming, and you are seeing this person is not in alignment with my order. But I, I brought you out of the world. I brought you into me. Spare not, cry out, because you see the uh, you see the dysfunction. So you see the dysfunction. You see, the you see the dysfunction. 
you see the dysfunction. And when you begin to see the dysfunction, God says, I want you to spare not in what? I can't hear you. I want you to spare not in what? Cry out. Because why? Again, the substance to my hope is the word of God. The substance to your hope is what? The substance to your hope is what? The word of God. The word of God. And it shall not what? Return void. That word cannot and will not return what? Void. So you know what God says is not going to return void. So you're going to have to fight what? A good fight of faith. Your hope, why? Because your hope is lined up with the word. Amen. Your hope is lined up so I say, say, with, with the, word. the word. So you have to fight the good fight of faith. faith. You have to fight the good fight of faith. faith. Why? So look at what I said. Because I want to obtain a good report. The one who speaks, you can't obtain a good report unless your word does what it says it do. Yeah. Amen? Amen. If you, your word don't do what it, you say it do, your report, the report going to be, God says don't even fear the prophet who lied. Because the report is he a liar. God says don't even fear when he speaks because he came back up. He has no substance to back up what you're hoping for. So God said don't fear him. Amen? Amen? We we get in there. We get in there. I'm doing what's funny because the man got walked in just in time as I'm as I'm, I'm kind of going in where, where I kind of warned him. The okay, watch this. Hold on. So we um, where are we? We, we didn't read twenty four yet. Okay, read twenty four and twenty five. Um. So Genesis chapter two, verse twenty four. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, mm -hmm. and they shall become one flesh. If I say one flesh. one flesh, I want you all to get this. In God's original plan, a man is to leave his mother and father and to cleave to his wife, and they are to become, if I say, one. 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 So there is not conflict between God's original plan. When it comes to men and women, Amen. they are to operate as one. one. Amen. 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 They are to operate as one. one. What's up? What, what, what's up? <laughs> they are to operate as one. Now, let me go here because this is what I what, what um I'm gonna show, I want to illustrate something. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take the, the, the uh I'm gonna. I ain't gonna say it until I get you up here. Uh, I'm gonna show you it's funny that girl, I'm gonna say God loves you, girl. No, no, you don't understand. I asked God a question last week when you left. And I felt like God, I, I felt like I didn't complete something. I was like, God, I, I said, God, but if you really want me to complete what you're talking about, then let her wear that same attire. And I don't know if that's the same thing, but it looked just like the same one, similar to it. Amen. So, but I knew it looked enough like what I was talking about and what God was talking about doing for what why he told you to wear it initially the first time. But I'm gonna show you, I'll show you that later. I'm just I just want to speak that. Um watch this man, God. I just want to say okay. Now, why are we talking we talking about God's original plan? Everybody understand? In God's original plan, we must understand that God's original plan must come to pass for God to have a good report. Everybody understand? Amen. God cannot be a liar. There cannot be a liar because if God's will does not come to pass, then he's not going to have a good um, report. And if God doesn't have a good report, then why would you trust in him? Right. Right. Amen? Yeah. If God can say something, and it does not come to pass, then you won't. What's the need to trust in him? I can't trust in him. Because we're going, I'm like, what we're going around saying, I'm like, man, God be lying. And you're going to be like, God be lying. Am I right? 
you know, I'm like, he don't do what he say he's going to do. And I'm going to tell you something. You better believe God ain't going to never be no life. The Bible let every man be a lie and God be the truth. God said, every word that I utter out of my mouth going to come to pass. Even when I say I'm coming, God is no liar. So God's report for man, God's report with man, out of man he poured woman. Mm -hmm. Now, when he poured woman, the Bible tells us that I'm going. I'm, I'm going to go here for time's sake because I want to kind of have enough time for what we're going with them and that with them. Um, that that Eve when um, that God told Eve, and the Lord God said unto the woman, "What is this that thou hast done?" And the woman said to the, the serpent, "Begot me." Okay, and God. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, he punished the serpent, but what about this? He tells the woman that she's going to give birth. Man, out of man, God created man from this. Out of man, he poured woman, and Dale tells the woman that she's going to give birth. God shows you the end of something like he showed me rolling the back to show you the beginning of what he can ready to establish. He's bringing back order between men and women. Why? Because God says the enemy has caused a division. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the church, yeah. there is a division. There are men walking out of order and there are women walking out of order. Therefore, leaving children to grow up out of order. In the house of God. We're not even talking about the world. In the house of God. I'm going to say something and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. Or be, be my I'm about to say this. When in a woman, as a woman, let me tell you one lie. The lie is, we'll say that if men won't step up and do the job, then God will raise up women to do the job. Everybody say, lie. Let me tell you why that's a lie. Because that means that God's report will come back. Somebody. That means he couldn't fulfill what he said. He could not establish the order. So we say that and be like, yeah, that's the word. So no way. That's why we that's why the women just raise him up and women are gonna be apostles and women gonna be like, no, 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 slow your roll. Slow your roll. You're not going to. See, we, and then we get stuff like this in the house. Then the women, and then, then you know, we have a situation where a woman may have a degree and this and that. And, this and, that. and she's not thinking she's going to tell her husband how to run that house. She's not going to respect God's order. Oh, we going to talk tonight. She thinks because of her education and her, uh, her financial status of these things will cause her or cause him, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be all in order, that that put her in a position to disrespect God's word. Yeah. Or she believe because, oh, I'm going to say something. Oh, she believe because she can speak in tongues and she can lay hands on the sick or she believes that she can disrespect or dishonor God's word. But my, but, but I got to read it again. I got to read it again. He says, the substance to my hope is the word of God. Why? Because it shall not return void. Ask me, the word that God is speaking is hope, ladies and men, that what? That that man will line up with what God has said. Don't take his place. Intercede like intercede for God that God will cause him to rise up. See, that's why it's a problem with these women conferences. Why? Because they're not tapped in to the heart of God because if they were tapped into the heart of God, they wouldn't be having conferences about what God going to give them and how they're going to raise up and bring for that. They would know that their heart would be pricked by the thing that's out of order for God. I'm just preaching what God told me. They would say, wait, hold up. There's 40 men. There's 70 women in the church and there's three men. They wouldn't be looking for no husband. They would be saying, this is out of order. Yeah. 
And because they respect order and they are called to know God's original plan and their hope is in God's original plan, Amen. they're going to want that order to line up. Amen. So now the women are wailing on the wall. They're sparing not. They're getting ready for from Holy to Holy to yeah. come in and begin to say, no, 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 we don't accept your, we don't accept your position like Satan wants us to have. We're not going to be offering you no food. We're going to pray that God bring you into order because why? Because God's word needs a good report. It ain't about me. It ain't about me. It's about God. But let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm about to turn over to you. Watch this. So sin came in. Now, I want you to remember this part right here. Verse 25, I'm going to read it. it says, 25 says, and they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Ooh, somebody get a pretend. Prophet, prophet. The man and the woman were naked, and they were not, it was one that's naked and not ashamed. Meaning that they saw before sin, they saw no fault in one another. They saw each other as being connected. Yeah. They saw each other as a team. They saw each other fulfilling God's purpose. Because sin came in, they were next. You got to understand what I'm saying. If you have it in its both, and yet they found no fault with the perfection of God. But why did they watch it? Because they watched it in his presence. They were in his presence. And yet they are naked. And they find no fault. They're not saying, girl, you know, gain weight. They're not saying, boy, you know what, you ain't got enough money. They're not saying all these issues that we are, that Satan has what? Escalated to bring division between man and woman. Who God said in Malachi, I desire a godly offspring, but I don't have men in order. That are the woman out of order. Yes, that are the children out of order. Yes, I said it. We as men are out of order. Because watch this. The Bible says it started with God having the dust in his hand. The Bible says he reached into the dust, love, spirit, and light, reached into the dust to form man into his image and his likeness. And then when sin came in, I'm going to see one seat. He says, I says, for time's sake, I'm not going to read all of this one. He says, hold on. Read verse 7 on um, chapter 3. Read verse 7. Verse 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Watch this. Sin caused their eyes to be open. I want you for your for your, your sake, read the whole chapter. But for time's sake, we get into this what God wants us to the meat of what God is talking about, about understanding how we are what God is doing now and, and this unified oneness in his body. Because what God is doing in the natural, he's doing in the spirit. Amen. What God is working on with man and woman, he's working on his body. You understand? He's talking a natural thing, but he's saying he's doing right now the same thing in the spiritual realm. Amen. So he says, now he says. They said they 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 she bit off the fruit, they disobeyed God, and now they are both naked and they see the nakedness. They now can see flaws, see each other in a way that sin will cause you to see outside of the purpose of God. Sin will cause you to see each other. I'm not talking about stuff. Sin will cause us to see each other outside the purpose of God. I'm going to say Sin will cause the man to see the woman outside the purpose of God. Sin will cause the woman to see the man outside the purpose of God. Because when they, before sin came in, when they looked at each other, they were naked and yet 
they saw nothing wrong with each other. Amen. They were not ashamed. You know, it's funny, even in church today, people like, I want a list. And the reason why we even choose lists is because you want somebody to line up what you perceive what is perfection for you. That shows God says your, that shows God that we are immature. Because Adam was asleep when God put together what was perfected for him. Amen. 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 All Adam needed to know was she came out from him. Y'all with me? Yes. But the deception of the enemy will tell us this thing is huge in the church. Or oh, I know it's perfect. I know it. How you're seen through your carnality. Oh, I know what kind of man I like. That's why you need to die. That's why you need to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow the one who's going to teach you how to love. Because love sees beyond your external things that you think you need to make you happy. Because if they made you so happy, then you'll still be with the ones you had that you was playing with before. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So that they don't make you that happy because you couldn't even hold on to the things you thought made you happy. Because you wrote, you created your list from a fallen state. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So Adam, so I'm, I'm about to say this, and then I want you to, but I want you to change time on this. Watch this. And you keep reading. He said, and her eye, the eyes were open, and they saw they were naked. Watch this. And they sewed fig leaves mm -hmm. together and made themselves coverings. They started covering themselves. Mm -hmm. You know the biggest problem with relationships today is covering up. <laughs> Covering or keeping secrets, not being able. Why? Because you're ashamed. Maybe you're ashamed of something you see. I've been there. Shoot. Still ashamed of how you handle something. Covering up. Cover people. You know, when somebody physically abused, they why? You know what's funny about when they physically abused? They have to open. They cover it up. They be verbally. This. They want everybody to be in the real carpet treatment. You know what I'm saying? But when they're home, they're cursing each other out. They're covering up. Why? Because of sin. Sin. Because that's not, that was never a part of God's original plan. Men and women were supposed to come at one. Not, but watch, I'm about to get to the part right here. Go, go, go ahead, keep reading. And they heard the sound of the Lord. God. Somebody scream. Oh, hallelujah. Now the sin has come in. They heard the sound of the Lord in the garden. Somebody say, they heard the word. They heard the word. See, when you start hearing, that's why, that's why God raising up prophets. That's why God was uh, raising up apostles. Why? Because you need to hear the word. Why? Because you still hide. And what God is trying to make war is divided. Amen. Amen. Is divided, and God's plan was always for His was to make it one, to walk as one, to work as a team for His purpose. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Remember, I'm talking about a natural thing, but I want you to understand a spiritual thing. In the body today, it is divided, it is. just like husbands and wives are divided. Mm -hmm. Just like it ain't just marriage; men and women are at all. They are at competition with one another, even in the spiritual realm. Again, I'm going to say that again. Women are acting as if they want to take the man's position instead of knowing God's heart to pray that he walk in his position. Yeah. They believe, they have conceived the lie. The lie is that God says that the man won't do it, I'm going to raise you up to do it. That is an absolute lie because God's report would come back negative in what he designed. Yeah. And when people say, God, you are a liar. You created man first. You gave him the dominion. You gave him authority. And you couldn't even get him to do what he put to call him to do. God, you are failed. God said, the devil is a liar. My word will not return empty. If I gotta raise up one man to begin to birth what I say, because that's my own. No woman will pull will step in that position. It's going to have to be a man. Why? Because that's what I extend. I don't care if they don't like you. I don't care if they say, well, you know what? You got to I know I love women. I understand the power of a woman, but I understand the order of God. So therefore, God had to establish what he said with a man. So, what's the problem with sin? 
one minute. Um, I'm gonna share y'all. I'm gonna share stay right here. Oh, my gosh, put me another share right there. Right there. Come here for me. I'm gonna show you what God showed me because God take me through stuff to learn it. Then it don't be joyful at the time. I want y'all to get the camera. And she, I want you to go back. Go back with her. I want you to walk over here. Take this. Um, she walked like a cripple. Oh, that's good. Talk to me. Talk to me. I want you to get excited, sir. God says, <laughs> he, oh, see. Come here, listen. He says, remember God is gently here. And I want you to do slow, like a cripple, though. God says, the bone, the woman is crippled. He said, my church, the bride, is crippled. When things are out of order, it will cripple you. Now watch this, man of God. When God showed me this in the dream, I asked the woman of God, I said, this is what I said in the dream, because I knew a woman in the dream, and I said, hey, because she was talking, I want to get out, watch it. I said, she was talking like she had no, like her husband died. She said, yeah, he was, and she spoke in past, past tense. And I, it, in the dream, I'm looking at her like, because I know the woman in the dream, I'm like, Yo, I said, he did? <laughs> That's what I said to in the dream. It wasn't Michelle, but I said to him, he did? He said, no, no, I'm like, why are you talking about, somebody don't get this. Why are you talking about he dead? And God says, that's where the woman is. She is broken by the man out of position. So she said to him, to her, he did. The order how he functioned, she did. Because let me tell you what, in the dream, what had happened was the reason why she was crippled, she was crippled. The reason why she was crippled, but I want to, the reason why she was crippled, because in the dream, the husband had threw something at her and hit her. The husband had threw something at her and hit her. Maybe he threw at her. It's the woman you gave. My you talking, you talking. Making her feel like I don't really want her to be a part of me no more. See, that's why even in the conference this year from Boris the Holy, God has to bring men back in the order because we have wounded. The woman. So when she prophesied, she prophesied from a place, a wounded place. A wounded place. Jesus. When she preached, she preached from an independence. Oh, from an independence of her head. Jesus. Why? Because her head has wounded her. So I want you to see the natural. So you can see it in the spirit. But God says, I'm getting ready to bring order. <laughs> but how do you bring order? Let me show you. You, know, you ready, man? God? You ready? Yes, sir. Ready? That's the moment order. Because what happened in the womb? You all right, woman? God? You, you, you need some help? You need some help? Come bring your little behind and sit right here. Come on. Let me help you. All right? Come on. Let me help you. Okay. All right. Just hold the little stick. You're okay. The womb is. And I'm okay. You know what's sad, man of God? She crippled, she don't even know. Mm -hmm. This is the sad part. She crippled and she don't know she crippled. She can't she, she preaching, bro. I don't even submit to nobody. I don't need nobody telling me nothing. And people don't even take even the sun. She crippled. Long as God talked to me, excuse me, as long as God talked, what are you talking about? If God is talking to you, he's going to talk to you. He's not going to supersede his order. If God tell me this, I'm the great you. Nobody can tell me nothing. What? So I guess Paul was speaking his stuff was foolishness. And people eating it. Why? It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a sad thing because people hurt, wounded. Wounded by dads, uncles, brothers. 
wounded by men being opposition. Y'all understand? And then blaming the woman as if you weren't standing by the tree. As if you were not standing by the tree. Amen. And you and to use you, your authority. Y'all with me? So that like I said there's a crippleness going on in the body. You know. This when God call you, brother, and God shake your house, and he's like God, he said, Well, I'm about to teach you everything so you can understand because you can't preach it unless I expose it. Watch this. I'm going to read this part. You ready? I'm going to read this. Read verse 8. Now I'm going to get, remember, to, remember, we started this out with saying, we started out saying, in your presence, what we say? He said, all right. My change is in your presence. Yeah? Mm -hmm. God is drawing the church back to his presence. Because sin because even in chasing and correction, what happened? People, with well, the first thing that Cain said, Cain walked from the presence. Come on. You're not going to correct me, God. I, that's what a falling away means. Yeah. When God said, away, it means, God, I'm not going to let you correct me. I'm not going to let you deal with me. I would rather stay outside. And this is a terrible thing to, to be outside the presence of God and trying to work for God. Hey, oh, God. come on, come on. You're going to be outside the presence of God and try to work for God. Yeah. That's self glorification. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now I said, okay. I said, go ahead and read that. Read verse eight, because I want y'all to get this. Because it's time for it's a shifting. It ain't a turn. It's a turning. And this ain't about no wealth and all. It's a shifting of the heart of God's people to turn back to His order. Why? Because I'm gonna read this again. I'm gonna read this again. The substance to my hope. What, what I hope in, substance to my hope, is the word of God. It shall not return empty. That's why I fight the good fight of faith. So I can obtain a good report. I fight the good fight of faith to obtain a good report. Amen? God wants a good report, meaning his word will not return empty. To get a negative report is to say, if your wife is saying about you that you are a liar, that's not a good report. Yeah. If your wife is saying that you are one way at home and you're a different way at church, that's not a good report. Now, let me, I hear your experience. Sometimes reports are falsified. Yeah. That can happen also. Amen. 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 Read 8. Genesis 3 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Say, stop hiding. Stop hiding. Stop hiding in your relationships dealing with one another. Yeah. Stop hiding. Go ahead. Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord yeah. God. Go, there you go. You know how I hide God. You see it. <laughs> they hid themselves from the presence of of uh, God. It is your pain. The song says, it is your presence that changed me. So if I'm hiding from your presence, then I'm hiding from the thing that's changing me. Mm -hmm. See, changing you is not bringing flowers. Mm -hmm. Changing you is not trying to deal with relationships with superficial worldly things. Mm -hmm. Changing starts with you acknowledging that I need to be in the presence to get everything I need to walk in the natural. Amen. Y'all with me? Uh -huh. They hear from the presence, but you got to sit in the Lord. Mm -hmm. oh. Because that's what I wanted to do. That they hear from the presence. Amen. Amen. So, um, my name is Devon. So, it's an interesting conversation uh, that we're having. And we had 
this conversation. I might say that as well. Oh, that's why I was talking far away from it. <laughs> okay, so I, I just wanted to uh, chime in a couple of things that uh, I would say when I regard minister concern, and especially, and just so you guys know, I'm ministering from a place of in my own house. Amen. I'm sitting here eating from my own house within myself. Amen. I know what you mean. <laughs> Listen, and so, so we, we're having this conversation because as uh, Apostle and I have been talking, the Holy Spirit revealed something to me a while ago, and he said to me that uh, the, the, this is the time where the, the sons of God are getting ready to return to the house of God. Right? And so we begin to have dialogue concerning this thing. And, and, and of course, if the sons of God get ready to return to the house of God, then there has to be women of God to receive them. Come on. Come on. So if there's going to be a birthing of men, there has to be a travailing woman in a house to give birth to them, right? So, 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 so I, I, I'm listening to what, what Apostle said, and I'm, and I'm uh, thinking to myself as the Holy Spirit just began to minister to me. I, I, I'm going to give you just a quick testimony, brief, and having a conversation in, in a while, for a while, my wife and I, for whatever reason, we could not come to an agreement on things, right? And so we're, we're arguing, and, 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 and I had this thing where um, at, at one point, not, this is the type of man that I am, but like I said what I said, and I'm going to say it once. I'm going to say it twice, but at the third time, I'm saying it anymore. Like, that is it. Mm. There's no more conversation for me. There's more. And, and so I had to go before the Lord and ask God, well, why is that? Like, why do I just automatically shut down? And something the Holy Spirit said to me that someone said to me before, he brought back to my remembrance. And he told me, he said, you have to have patience because you are not programmed to hear her above you. Think about it for a second. The reason I'm frustrated when we talk, the reason I was frustrated when we were going, when we were arguing, is because you have not been programmed to hear her above you. Why is that? Because as the apostle said earlier, God brought woman out of man. Man's initial communication was with God. So anytime a voice goes higher than God to a man, he then does not know how to respond in the earth realm which causes frustration, anxiety, anguish, and the desire to disconnect what diminishes the authority that is automatically in him. Amen. Amen. Okay. So catch that for a second. Right? No, I don't want to have the loudest voice in the house. But what I do want is for God's voice to be louder than both of us. Amen. And my desire is that when I hear you talk, I should hear God through you. That's how I respond. So we got a lot of men that are not being held accountable because a lot of women are not in place to hear God to know how to speak to the God man. My God. Now, check this out. So, so as I, I'm talking, I'm thinking, and I heard Apostle say earlier that about the hope and that the word of God won't come back to him void. So this is just a quick encouragement as I go into everything else. When we talk about the word of God, we tend to take it to paper and the Bible and scripture. Um, but what we have to also understand is that we are the word of God because we are the promise that God placed in the earth realm to put the gospel out there, not only by word, but we have to be a uh, billboard for the gospel. And so we're the walking word. Because we have to live this thing out. Because some people may never read the Bible, but they'll read you. Amen. Some people may never go to scripture, but they'll listen to everything that you have to say, right? And so when he said that his word can't come back to him void, we can't return to him void. We have to do what he sent us out to do. Amen. And we cannot return back to God void. That's also in covenant because God honors marriage. So check this out. So Apostle was talking earlier and, and, and it hit me and I was like, oh, God, they might not understand this portion. Somebody might get mad with me, but it's all right. Because one of the issues of Apostle that we face, and I've learned even for myself with both men and women, is that we have a lot of women in position, but not posture. So when you said about, when you said that God is not going to use the woman to do what 
called the man to do, it is because when, when so we have to realize when the man is not in place, you cannot fulfill that position because that position is not built to hold you. The, the power comes in is when the position is empty, but you're found in the posture of prayer the posture of intercession, the posture of accountability, not just to yourself, but holding the man accountable. And I'm going to pause I'm going to plug right there and say this also, but that also goes back to us men, because even if we have a man that is out of place, which goes generational, that if you marry a man and he gets out of place, where is the stability of your father to say, don't go there? Let me stand right here until he gets back home. Because I can't have you trying to take care of everything. And then you get out of posture, then there's nobody praying because I got a grandson here. So if he sees you in his father's position, then him growing up has to fulfill the mother's position. Y'all have passed that in one second. If I find you in the position of masculinity, then somebody has to fill the position of femininity in the household. If I find you in a posture of taking care of everything, then somebody got to rest all of the time. And then we get mad when our sons come out of the household and don't understand what they should and how they should be doing because we don't have those conversations, right? So, so, so women, the women, uh, it's too many women in position. I mean, in position and not posture. Does that mean, Prophet, that women shouldn't be, uh, like women shouldn't lead? No, women should be leaders, but not in authority. Come on. Women are called to be leaders. And how in the Bible, women are definitely called to be leaders, but the authority that God gave into the earth realm is for the man to be positioned to hear God, that he may have dominion over all things to present those things back to God so that kingdom can go forth. But the issue that we face is that we got women in position and not in posture. But that problem comes from men wanting power, but not placement. The Bible says that the, the, the Trinity said, let us make man in our image Amen. and in our likeness. And then God created man from the dust of the earth. After he created men from the dust of the earth, the Bible tells us that he placed them in the garden. So men have a placement, but we so high strong on being the authority, being the voice, that we want more power than we want placement. We want to rule out of position. We want to tell you what to do with our children from another house. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Because <laughs> some things, as Apostle just said, some reports are falsified. If that is the case, we still have to use wisdom on how to do the things that we do. Not, it, it is not only in the house, but it's in the community. It's in the house of God. It's in everything that we do. So I said all that to say this. The example that uh, Sister Michelle um, was in the example that the cripple when the apostle gave me that revelation we were talking about it I began to think about it and I asked the Holy Spirit how did that situation take place where like he saw her cripple how is she crippled and the Holy Spirit began to give me a visual and he showed me that she's in a position a, a posture of helplessness she is helpless and I was like, helpless? Of course she's helpless because he's crippled. He was like, no. She has to do what she has to do because she don't have no help. She has to run ministry because there's no help. She has to raise the kids because there's no help. She has to make ends meet because there's no help. She's helpless, which means she is forced to be out of position. Why? Because the Bible says that when, she took, when he took her from Adam, he introduced her as a help me. So because she doesn't have anything or the right person to help, she's trying to help God be God in her house. She's trying to help her children take their place, help her family be strong, help the bills get paid. So she's helpless. 
So as men, it is now time to give her a reason to be a healthy. So with that being said, I said, God, so how has she been over? She's been over because she's carrying a weight called strength that she wasn't designed to carry. Amen. That's what is, that was the order of God. She's carrying around a weight called strength that she's not supposed to be carrying. She's not supposed to be carrying strength. Now, now, mind you, the world has taught us that women are emotional. But that's not her weight either. Emotions is not the weight of a woman either. Men are emotional. Amen. Truthfully, we are. We are sensitive. Because the minute our authority gets tested, now we're angry. Just because we don't cry don't mean it ain't emotional. Amen. Just because we're not weeping and, 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 and don't mean when we catch our sight and touch them, that's emotion. When we're ready to slap somebody, go off, that's emotional. Amen. When we're instantly frustrated because things don't go our way, it's emotional. She is not designed to carry emotions. She is not designed to carry strength. She is designed to carry two things, you and glory. Her posture is to carry you as a man. Their posture is to carry us as men. Help us perform what it is God called us to perform, right? Because, and we get stuck right here. Like, we think that only women are supposed to be holy into marriage. But the Bible says that he spoke to Adam. The Bible says that he put Adam to sleep when he saw it wasn't good for him to be alone. So even as men, we don't have no business running around sowing our royal oats. We don't have no business test driving the car before we buy it. Because the Bible says when he saw it wasn't good for men to be alone, he put Adam to sleep and made him a help me. He knew what Adam needed before Adam even needed it. Amen. So while we say that women ought to hide themselves so their husband finds you, men go to sleep and let God do the work. Close your eyes and stop looking at everything walking by. Close your eyes off the of social media and stop wanting hip dips and fingertips because guess what God did? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove to you why that's important. Because we have a desire as men. We were created in a garden that had everything. So our natural desire is to want everything. Our nature is to want to dominate everything. We want to have the best of everything. And it gets so bad to the car the carnal part is that we don't even have to have the best of everything. We just got to have everything. Amen. It don't matter how you look, hip, dip, fingertip, bow leg, bow eyes, all that. If we can get you, we're going to get you. Right? Amen. But the issue is that we have to, God put Adam to sleep, and this is just me paraphrasing it, one of my beliefs in my study, I said, God, like, I, I, I didn't understand why you put Adam to sleep, but then I started thinking about it. Oh, because you didn't want Adam to be trying to tell you how he won't be made. <laughs> but God, give him a God, give him that. God, don't let her be loud. God, don't let her do this. God, let her, let her have hip, hip, fingertip, God. Let her be bowling with long hair and red with, with, with all, this, all this other stuff. And God said, no, go to sleep because I know what you need. Go to sleep. And the good thing about God, he's so graceful to us that he allows us to go to sleep so we don't feel the pain of surgery. Amen. We don't even feel the pain of the process because the truth, truth be told, the truth be told, God was so gracious to us because he knew what the earth realm needed. So he knew what Adam needed and he knew what Eve was going to need in order to produce what he said, produce and do what he said, do. Adam didn't even no Eve. So he was sleep through the process. When he saw her, he said, bone of my bone. He said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Why is that? Because the glory he felt inside, he saw manifested. The work that he saw and felt that needed to be done on the inside, he finally saw it in the flesh. And so us as men, as Apostle was saying, it's time for us to not only come home, but come back to the house of God and in coming back, take our rightful place in authority, but fully submitted to God outside of our own desires and what we want. Because the issue that we're having, we can't come back is again because sin has opened our eyes and we're finding fault with the bride. We'll come back in and say, oh, they the church is this and the church is that but we're skipping the fact to say it's like that because I haven't been here mm -hmm. okay. 
It's more women in the church because you ain't been there. If one man come back in, aside from the street that said heaven rejoices when one returns, if one man comes back in, we just made the, 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 the numbers, we just uh, got closer to evening out the odds. If you tell your cousin, come on the service, we just got closer to evening out the odds. If you tell your brother, come on in, if we come on in to the bride, to the house, we get that much closer to evening out the, the, the odds. And, and, and as a reflection of the church, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to bring the vision. So the reflection of the house of God or your house is a reflection of each other. Because the men have left. And, and let me tell you this. Uh, the church didn't empty out of men because the homes did. The homes empty out of men because the church did. Mm. When they left God, they didn't have a requirement to stay home. They didn't have a charge or a desire to stay home. So when they left the church, they left the home. If we can get them back in the church, we'll get them back home. Amen. If we can witness to them back in the church, we can witness to them in the home. And so we have to be prime example of that. Go ahead. I'm going to come. I'm going to I saw this on my way here today uh, as I was watching the channel and I told you, and they were talking about abortions. And I was watching these two ladies and they were speaking, and they were speaking with such anger. And they said something I thought was ironic. They said they're trying to take away our freedom. And I thought about that was interesting that a child now is to take away a woman's freedom. I gotta hear what you're just saying. A child is to take away a woman's freedom. Where a child used to be a blessing, now is to take away her freedom to choose if that child live or die. You know what I'm saying? And God says, I want you to see this perversion. Yeah, that's this, what it is. See what this, this she, she's cri they crippled. And they're sitting there arguing and debating about abortion, about killing the seed in them. Now remember, I told you the dream what God showed me. The little boy rolled up into a seed and went back into the woman, right? Mm -hmm. When the, when the seed went into the woman, the woman rolled back up into a rib and went back into the man. But see, if the man despises his own rib, why would she want the seed? Mm. See what I'm saying? She, <laughs> well, she, don't, she, don't find, she has no problem killing the seed when the man has no value for the rib. See what I'm saying? So now what we're seeing is this play. God is putting America on front. He's putting America. And now, come on, this, this, came, this thing came out all out the blue. Everybody thought World War Wait was, was a done deal. Now all out the blue was like it was, and it was funny. They said that the thing was hidden, and, and somebody exposed it. The, what they were doing was hidden, and it was and, and it's and it's um it's being exposed. And God, that's, and that's what that's what God is doing. Something is hidden. How we've been treating one another, yeah. and God says, "I'm exposing it, and I'm exposing it." But to expose this, I must take it back to the original. I must take it back to the point where the child rolls back and the sea goes back in the woman. And the woman rolls back and the rib goes back into the man. And the man rolls back and he goes back into the dust of the creator. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it is the creator that's creating it. And the creator has a purpose. Yeah, but yeah. The creator is creating with a purpose. Amen? He's yeah. creating because he has an established word. And then we talk about the substance to my hope is the word of God. The creator has a word for man. He's not just creating man just for no idea. He has already established, let us create man. If you read the verse, you will notice that, that, that one, in, 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 uh, in Genesis 1, uh, 26, he talks about creating man and woman in his image. Then he goes, then you don't see it done all the way until you get to 2-7. You see him forming. Why? So that means he creates with a vision. Yeah, he creates with a vision of what he is forming. So when he forms from the ground, he knows what he's designing. Amen. Yeah. And out of that, he knows what it needs. Like you just said, man, he knows what it needs. And he knows together what it's called to produce. Yeah. So God says, I'm not, what is your hope? Your hope is the beginning. Your hope is God. That's why the blessing, when a man gets you, or a man gets a point, when, when you are a blessing. Why? Because in Genesis 26, he said he blessed them. Who did yeah. he bless? 
the ones he had a created purpose for when he said, let us create man in our image after life. Then he said he blessed them. Then he went in 2-7. Uh, and then he said he formed man. And then he went uh, in 2-7. Then you see in 2-21 where he says he put man to sleep and poured out woman. So watch this. He, he has a vision. He now forms man from the dust, makes him a living soul, then puts man to sleep and pull out woman. God says, you must know this and understand this according to scripture if you're going to be my prophet. If you're going to be my prophet. Because if you don't understand order, then what are you speaking about? Because right. if you see something out of order, then your job is to spread out and cry out to bring it back to order. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because you have to understand that God is not deviating from what he has said. Right. Amen. He's not deviating from his initial what initial thing? Romans 8 29. I foreknew you. When that's why that's why I got a problem with Calvinists. Calvinists on well, God be No, foreknew you mean his initial word that he established. The, the, uh, foreknew you mean when God spoke to man, he speak to all men. Yeah. When he spoke to Adam, he was speaking to all men. When he spoke to Eve, he spoke to all creation. So therefore, when God says man, when he says, I foreknew you, he's saying, I never changed my ideal from when I said, let us create. Why? Because if God creates, if he changes that ideal and does not produce it, then he does not have a what? Obtain a good report. Yeah, man. He does not obtain a good report if God cannot fulfill that. That's why when Jesus comes, my God, he is the he is the groom, and we are his bride. And he says, I'm going to obtain a good report in this. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then what he says, watch, and why does Jesus now in Ephesians deal with husbands and wife? He said, husbands. He says, now you have an imitator. Now you have an example of love for how to operate and to function to bring the bride. My God, to bring your bride into yeah. a way where she's no longer crippled. Well, how do I get there, God? He says, husbands, love your wife. He says, love, 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 love. He says, your partner was love. Why? Because when you step from my presence in here, you step out of the presence of love. Yeah. You, and therefore, you started loving based on your desire. You started loving, and then when you started loving, and because the woman is so committed to her position, when you became a gangster, she became a female gangster. When you became a thug, she became a female thug. When you became when you became whore, she became she became something to sell. Whatever you came, whatever you became, she helped you do it. Yeah, that's why the strip club she helping you do it. When you when you when you that's why they get arrested. Help me, that's it. Even to the day the man's fall and say. Women are still operating as a help me. She don't care if judge across the border like that for you. She'll let you pimp her and sell her to be your help me. Don't out of order and say, don't go hurt your mind. Because why? She's like, I gotta help you. You're like, why can't you let you go? Why can't, why can't you let me go? Why can't you let it go? Because I'm bound to the world. I'm bound to so what I so now watch the women who get saved are the miracles. They must cry out and stop. Bring back order. If you don't believe it, you never saw a woman gangster rapper until you saw a man woman gangster. Come on. What you're seeing is women helping. Yes. Helping yes. men in their fallen state. Helping me. Women are helping them so, helping them in the dysfunction. So I saw an article, I saw a thing other she's like, are you his main or his side? They will accept dysfunctional positions to try to walk in their position. Wow. You talking, sir? You talking. And God says, see, God who created the order said, this must stop. Yeah. This must stop. God said, this must stop. You got something to share? Come here. Come here. Hallelujah. I want to go back to Genesis 2. Because I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm like, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. And I want to ask the men a question. This is what God dropped in my spirit. And the question is, why did you stop speaking? I'm going to show you. Why did you stop speaking? 
if you go to chapter 2, verse 19, I'll just read it. It says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his what? That was his name. Now that's, so God gives Adam, he's practicing and he's giving Adam one level of authority. The next level, he sees God's heart and he says in verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for because she was taken out of man. So now he speaks to what was taken out of him. So now he is walking in authority over what was taken out of him. Then we go to chapter three, verse six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes of a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. And the Lord is saying, why did you stop speaking. We need, the enemy knew that the woman would go before and, and, and have a conversation. And I'm asking the men, and you are, those of us who are in God's face, why have we stopped speaking? If the men stop speaking, then the women have no direction. We don't know what to call a thing. We don't know what to declare a thing if you don't speak to us and say, hear the word of the Lord. This is the way it's going to go. And so now God has to create a second Adam. A second Adam that will declare, this is my bride. And, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, okay, so the second Adam. The second Adam comes through Mary. So now we are the daughters of Mary. And when the word is spoken, she cannot release it, right? The angel of God comes and speaks to her and she says, be it to me according to your will. Now, Joseph was the son of David, come through the lineage because everything in the scriptures comes to pass. And now he's supposed to put her away and God declares to him, no, 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 this is my seed. And the seed that comes forth will reconcile, right? Mothers, oh my God, y'all got Jesus. Mothers and their sons, mothers and their daughters, fathers and their sons, the whole reconciliation process comes back again, where Joseph now declares, because God spoke to him, you cannot touch this thing. The seed that is in her, we declare it to be God, the son of God. And now, because of his obedience, we are back in alignment oh. my God. because he had to go and tell the people I will not put her away come on 
I will not put her away because the seed, the seed that she is carrying is the salvation for the whole world. So I say to the men again, you, Joseph was in a place to hear. Joseph did not remain silent. Come on, come on. So my question again to the men is, why did you stop speaking? For God has given you the authority to declare a thing, name a thing, walk in dominion of a thing, run your household, be the priest of a household, the father of your children. Amen. That, that was powerful because it's funny. I believe that um, sometimes men stop speaking because they are afraid of what people might say. See, God never. Let me, let, me, let me see why I'm saying it to you. Let me see why I'm saying this. The, um, God had appeared to Joseph because the position that was in at that moment could have made Joseph look bad. So if Joseph was a man who cared more about how he looked, more about his personal image, he would have put her away. Come on. Come on. In a way, way before and sometimes when we are self-absorbed and about self, we don't speak no more because we're speaking to somebody else. That we may feel like we want to hear. We won't fight the good fight of faith. We won't fight with the order. And sometimes men won't fight with the order of what God is because they don't know. Because we're in a, we're in a, we're in a society now that says, you know, get rid of it. It's easy just to get rid of it. It's easy just to go to the next one. And we're going to say, come on, if you come on, think about this for a minute. God has exposed, even on the highest level of sometimes our uh, uh, religious leaders who have divorced their wives like it was candy. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about some of the most prominent singers and some of the most prominent worshipers got rid of their wife and the church remained silent as if it was no big deal to say, uh, to, to cover her, for she is pregnant with the seed. You know what I'm saying? She is pregnant, she is pregnant, I, I'm gonna read this. She is pregnant with, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of his increase, of his government, peace, there shall be no, there will be no end to his throne of the day. I, I read that because this is the this is the seed. And these are the things that we need to fight the good fight of faith with. Counsel, certain Prince of Peace, government, his rule to be able to function correctly. And I agree with the woman of God. Oh, we, we need to open up our mouths and speak not, you, you're not this, you're not. And then when we do open our mouth, we're speaking the wrong thing. Yeah. And instead of speaking what so says the Lord say. Okay. And when you, but to speak what the Lord says, you can't really care about what people think about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to add to what the woman of God was saying. Ironically, I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, ironically, as the uh, woman of God was speaking, and the question she asked her, let me say that was that was that's a real question that even if we answer tonight, we ought to go home and just begin to ponder on that. Why? Why are we? Why have we stopped speaking in our home? 
Why do we stop speaking at any given time um, over our children, over our finances? Just it, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna tell you personally, I'm gonna answer it right now, but I'm going to think about that. And rest assured, I'm gonna be tagging on Facebook. Gonna, every time I come up with an answer, I'm gonna be tagging. <laughs> every time I think about why I, 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 I'm excited, I'm gonna um, talk about it. Um, and, and two things, so just ironically, um, the Holy Spirit seven months ago spoke to me and said to me, I'm giving you an assignment and it's called Generation Unmuted. And the purpose of that is because the one thing the enemy truthfully and wholeheartedly is subject to is the word of God. And the only way he has to face the word of God is, is if we speak it. Amen. And his job is to mute us with pain. Amen. So we can't speak to pain. It's to mute us in depression. Amen. It's to mute us in insomnia. It's to make us so weak till we can't speak. It is to suffocate us to the point that we lose sound. Because the Bible tells us that even in the last days, that a sound will go out in the land to indicate that God is on his way back. So he wants to silence the sound of redemption, of reconciliation, uh, all that stuff. I want to share that again. As she was sitting there speaking of Apostle and, 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 and uh, Sister Michelle, the Lord brought something to my attention right before she said what she said. He, he was saying to me, um, why did Adam call Eve this woman when he had to respond to God? That may sound like what? Well, that makes no sense. But if you think about what Apostle was saying earlier, how when they ate of the, the, the when they ate from the tree, their eyes were open and they became conscious of sin. That's number one. Number two, it says that they sold fig trees around them which means that they begin to see fault in each other. They were then covering themselves up from each other because if you think deeper into that, we're the only two in the garden. Why do I need to cover myself from you? Right. You have seen me all of this time. What makes this different, right? So if once you go down and read into the scripture, the Bible says, before God asked the question, the Bible says they heard his voice walking through the, the garden. His voice represents speech, sound, his presence walking through the, the garden. Then the Bible says that he asked Adam uh, a question. Adam responded to him and said, the woman you gave this to me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. We, we and, and myself included, for years preached that Adam transferred over his authority to her in that moment. But in retrospect, he disassociated himself from her. What he did was he dropped responsibility for her. He said, the woman you gave me, which means at this point, I shouldn't be held accountable for what she did because you gave her to me. Let's fast forward back to what the woman of God was saying. This is why it's important that we now speak because it's time to pick up the responsibility. Joseph said, come on, come on. Joseph said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Adam was afraid because the Bible says when they heard the voice of God, he became afraid. So, Apostle, you're absolutely right. It is fear that keeps us from speaking. Because he was afraid of what? Judgment. He said, God, don't judge me. Judge yourself because you gave me this woman. Joseph said, even though I didn't have nothing to do with what Mary is carrying, I'll take the responsibility. I'll take the responsibility. So hold on. Even though I don't understand how she got pregnant, I'm gonna take the response. Joseph said, I'm not gonna let them kill. If you try to kill her, you got to kill me. If you try to kill a seed, you got to go through me. I don't know how she got the baby. I don't know where the baby came from. But in this moment, like the woman of God said, Joseph declared. I'm going to speak up for what God said. He said that God said that it's mine. God said that I put it down. So I got to take responsibility for it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
I got to make you believe this, my baby, so you don't turn your back on God. Then I'll say that all of those who notice that, that's another subject. But, but for those who don't know, if I got to protect the seed of God, and I got to protect the anointing, that's how come the household of individuals who subject themselves to God are more faithful than any other because I don't take responsibility for the things that God has put me in place, right? He's saying not only the house, Joseph was saying, guess what, I'm not going to only be responsible. I get excited, I'm going to sit down and hustle. I'm not going to only take responsibility. I'm not going to speak only for me. Because Joseph could have chose to speak for himself. I didn't know her. And whether you know it or not, that was one of the greatest crimes then. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Come that was what she, Mary could have been put to death. Because if Joseph had a told the other men that I never knew her. Watch this. Adam told God, this woman you gave me, which signified I don't know her. You know her better than I do, but Joseph said, I know Mary. I have, he, even though he had not known her sexually, he said, I'm going to take responsibility because I know her. I know her character. I know who she is. I know the anointing. If God says she called, I know. I know that it's the presence of God. So Joseph decided to speak up. Come on. Not only for Mary, so in modern day time, it is now that we speak. Speak as men. We take responsibility for the community we in. We take responsibility for the children we encounter. We take responsibility for the women that we see. We take responsibility. It is our job as men to come together. If we see a single mother, it is our job as men to say what you need. We got you. If we see widows, what you need. We got you. We need to go to the schools if they fail it. We got you. We need to go and find, create jobs for them. Come on. I want y'all to grasp. I want us to grasp what the prophet is saying. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to grasp, but I want you to take it back to the beginning. I want you to grasp it, but I want you to take it back to me. You say, take it back to what me. Watch this. The substance to my hope is the word of God. Mary was pregnant with the word. Mm. Joseph was defending the word. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Joseph was actually defending the word. God is saying, where is my generation that will defend the word? Amen. Amen. Why do yeah. my generation yeah. stand aside and let them avoid my word? Jesus. What is going on? It was why are my people. Why would you, the woman of God said, the young prophet, the woman of God says, why, why you don't speak? Where are the men who will speak yes. that will say, no, 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 because you worried about it, but you ain't give us this body, but hold, watch it, because they gonna say to you, why you won't speak, because they gonna say, it's my body? Yeah. No, 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 you're wrong. According to order, it is not your body. You came out of my body. And I understand why you're crippled because I didn't value you as you came out of my yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. I didn't honor you as you came. I didn't love you. I, I, I spoke, and when I spoke names like Thor, I spoke names like H's and B's. I spoke names that gave you identity that was degrading to you so you couldn't value the seed. But now I come because I understand that there is a word. See, like my brother's first language. The rising of the sun. I understand there's a rising of sons. Amen. Amen. There's a rising of sons who will speak, woman of God. They are going to declare and decree the word of God. And they're going to speak it. And they're not going and they're going to denounce the be the H. They're going to say that you are wonderfully made. They're going to say that you are the apple of his eye. They're going to say that you are a royal priesthood. They're going to say that you are a holy nation. They're going to speak over you the truth. Amen. And they're not going to be afraid also to correct. Yeah. And if you don't like to correct, because I'm not going to speak with Hagar. And I'm not going to bite from the fruit. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Because I 
the law. I can't play with the liar. For the first Adam died with his bride, but the second Adam died for his bride. So I'm going to die for my bride. Because the Bible says there's no greater love. And since I have to go to a greater love in Christ Jesus, I know how to die for you now. I know how to die for you. I know how to die for you now. And I'm commanded by the word to do so. I'm commanded by the word to sanctify. Yeah. But I found out that the word sanctification starts in John, John 17 when he said, I sanctify you because I word, that word is, I'm going to sanctify you by the seed of the word. Yeah. You got me sitting in the back, look at me high five. I'm going to because she is beautiful. Amen. Amen. Wonderfully made. See, even a woman's own self esteem comes from a man speaking the wrong word. Yeah. Amen. How she sees herself. Come. So God says, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to, um, God says, I'm birthing. Come on. And, and see, so you wonder, why did I go to nine? A child is born. Because that was was in her womb. That was the word declared in her womb. He was mighty counselor. Amen? Amen. Mighty Bob, you know, the government, the rule of authority, the, the, the authority was in his hand. And now that spirit, now men, sons, see, not the not men. I, I, I say this to my spiritual daughter sometimes. You don't want God. You, one of the biggest errors with a woman is to ask God for a man. Yeah. Don't ask God for a man. Ask God for a son. Yeah. Why? Yeah. A son has an inheritance. Come on, come on, yeah. come on. He has an inheritance. He has the ability to withdraw from his father at times where we call with his sufficient funds. Yeah. The, come on, there, there you go. Because in the old time, you can't marry us. You can't, you can't, you can't marry anybody but your, you can't marry anybody but your sister. Yes, yeah. you have to marry your sister. You have to marry within the covenant. Yeah. A, a son. I'm mean, gonna say this too. I gotta say this. If I've been there, if you start to see error, stop looking at your wife. Yeah. Get back into the presence of God. Give back and, and God is not going to destroy you. He loves you. Mm -hmm. But he must teach you how to govern your house. Yeah. According to his will. Now, I'm going to tell y'all on the illustration. I didn't know God was teaching this about me. I, I, I got a lesson. I didn't really understand the fullness of it. I have a there, yeah, I know. Y'all heard me say this. I'm going to say it again. I have a dog named Tweet. <laughs> Tweet has a complex problem. She thinks she a pig. She thinks she's about 250 and she and she growling and she will try to attack you. Your little dog. That's our friend Rob. We know we they need deliverance. Yeah. yeah, you know they, they got that same problem. <laughs> Tweet was having an ear problem. And my, my wife was like, I, I see Tweet. Uh, get, get on crush for a minute. Uh, I'm going to bring this on. Get, get on crush for a minute. I saw Tweet in pain. I was walking around like this, she walked around like this. Her ears, she is in extreme pain. The doctor gave us the medicine. I said, Tweet, bye. Somebody gonna get this. Yeah. I did not want to confront Tweet because I know to confront Tweet, though I know what's best for her. I know I have the antidote to her healing, but I don't want to confront her because I feel like I'm going to be in danger. Yeah! Because I have not gotten to the peace of a greater love. The greater love, say, the Bible says there's no greater. See, I know if I confront Tweet, Tweet bite me, that's going to hurt. So I'd rather let Tweet walk around crippled. Rest your Lord. Some of us, you let your wife, you let women walk around crippled because you don't want to take on. Amen. Because you know she's going to go off. She might even say, I'm going to do this. But that's what you said. That's okay. Some of y'all may say, no, that's, oh, yes, it is. Why? Because your job is to trust. See, you think divorce. No, it ain't divorce. You just gotta trust God to back up what you do. Amen. Amen. Jeez. You gotta. I'm not looking. No, it ain't no divorce. Divorce ain't gonna be no option. But she might leave. She might sleep on the couch. But I stood for God, so God is obligated to save my household. Amen. He obligated. He has to respond because I stood on His word. 
and it was his word that says, uh, that which I have put together, that no, no man touch on that. And his word says he hates divorce. Yeah. So I got to count on his word when I sing. Because I want to give y'all the word. Tweet. And then when, when me and my wife tackled that situation, I put on some mitts. <laughs> What God said, get dressed. Come on, get dressed. Get dressed. God said, man, get dressed. Get dressed. Because, yes, there's going to be some problems. Get dressed in what? Patience. Get dressed and long suffering. Yeah, because you might not get. You know what I'm tired of, woman of God? Sometimes what's problem with us, we think we're going to always get a perfect response. You got the American dream and you don't have a king. You think that because you said something on her right, and she going to, okay, God, it's going to work out. I saw a movie in the movie. Guess what? The husband died. Mm -hmm. I was like, but they said, the woman was mad because they served God. God says, it don't always go as you plan. Mm -hmm. I know a brother right now that I love. I love this brother right now. We prayed for this brother. We prayed for this brother. And God has used this brother mightily, right? And this brother was facing a prison term and this and that and that. And we like, God, you know, and you know what this what God said? God says, no, I'm, 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 I'm giving him six years. Wow. And I walk away, and I'm like, how are you going to do it? But I'm like, God says, that's my will. That's my will. Yeah. And God says, what happens when it don't go the way you want to? Right, right. What happens when you take a stand, and then she get up and pack us up, and she leaves? Right. Now, watch it. That's when you, that's when you, then that's when hope, that's when the substance to my hope is in the word. That's when I fight. When she left because let me tell you what, what the world do. The world do it since she left. I'm gonna give you another life. No, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. 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 devil is a liar. The world's gonna go sleep tonight. No, I'm not. I don't care if it's a year to you. I can't cry. I'm by. Paul said, I'm a prisoner by the word. And the world tell me, no, she might not do that. She don't want to be because she don't like to stand on what I'm doing with God. I can't go sleep with another woman. I can't go get someone else. I can't throw her away because I'm a prisoner of the word. I have to please God in this situation. I don't like the way it's turning out. I don't like the way I feel. I, can, I want to escape, but I can't because the word has me bound. See, I found out what God means when he said you're a prisoner. See, you don't know that you're a prisoner until you really have a choice to do something other than what God tells you to do. When you really have a choice to do something other, and yet you choose to obey God when it's not going the way you want it to go. And, and you know, like, no, you oh, you're going to get a divorce. Well, she don't even want nothing to do with you. She don't. See, when you when the, when a person don't want nothing to do with you, that's when you find out you're a prison. Come on, come on. I don't understand why you can't go. I can't go. I can't go get another no. Come on. No. No. And then you're like, but you know, you, 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 mm -hmm. you know, she withholding her body from you. Mm -hmm. You know, then you start talking with your excuses. You start saying, well, you know, well, you know, you gotta go do something. God be like, well, you committed to her, well, you committed to me. Yep. Your commitment first to me. Can you say that? Yep. Your commitment to God first. Because I never serve her without being committed to God first. Because why? He'll teach me how to love her. Can I say something? Yeah. Awesome? And, and to be honest with you, if you really are believing in the serve of God, you can't. You can't at all. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, the king, all these other things shall be added unto you. You can't be a husband until you're a son. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can't be a father until you're a son. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom. Sons reside in the kingdom. Hey. So only sons know how to respond to kingdom. So you cannot. <laughs> so you cannot be any of these things unless you become first a son. Because God responds to the son. No, not until you are a son. No. 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 You can't even respond to the word unless you walk in sonship. Watch this. You may not know what sonship is, but submission leads you into sonship. And I said that to say this is so powerful. Is because even as the Lord said, the men are coming back to the household of faith. The first thing we have to then do, do is present them to sonship. Not present them to the woman. Not present them to the prophet. Not present them to the apostle. Not present them to a title. But we have to present them to our sonship, right? Because we think because God said they're coming back. Does not mean they're coming back home. The 
Bible says that there's a net that will be cast out of all, that will gather all kinds. I need you to know that when he comes back through that door, he's probably still going to be operating in horror. Mm -hmm. He's probably still going to be an addict. He's probably still going, because what God is saying is, I'm putting a people in the streets to push them in the house, but is the house ready to God, receive the that's God? Good, that's good. We have to be a living example of the sonship. Yes. God responds to the sons of God. And that's not just saying men, because sons and daughters, that this sonship means son and daughter. So God is calling, and, and, and you said something um, earlier that I wanted to kind of touch this on really quickly, the, the woman's speech. Women's speech, and I, I say this in my own kind of mindset, you know how you have somebody that speaks Spanish and then you have a translator, right? To give you understanding of what that person is saying because you don't speak that language. Women are translating men's actions. Because he's acting foreign, because she comes out of him, so she knows him. She where he's supposed to be, what he's supposed to be doing. But because he's acting foreign, she has to then translate what she think it is, which means she begin to degrade him and her, begin to talk down to the children, begin to speak things that are not of God. Why do you think that when reconciliation takes place, her language changes? Right? She is translating what she sees, even to other women. Yeah. She's translating what she sees. That's why when she comes into the house and, and, and the, the men of God or the women of God are preaching the word, and or the man of God is preaching the word, and she's seeing the behavior of the man of God like, I know that. Like, this is what I think the man's supposed to act like. That's why she then begins to change her language even over herself. Because I have someone, something to translate that pushes me into a place that I'm supposed to be in. Because there's an example of sonship yeah. to God mm -hmm. first. And that's how I respond. That's how we respond. Amen. I want to do something. Are we getting this tonight? Yeah. Listen, you're in the classroom. I mean, everybody's here. I want your attention. Everybody is here. You were meant to be here tonight. To understand God's order. Amen. And understand. And I'm going to tell you, doing this well, God is going to begin to do a healing. There's a healing that has to take place. The uh, and I'm going to show you the healing. I want to, I want the prophets to come here for me. I want you to come here for me. Uh, uh, the elder come here for me. I want to do something that God said. I'm going to give you another chance. I want to talk about coming from me. This is the healing. Um, 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 come here for a minute, um, Mr. L, L, um, Jason, Elder Jason, come here for a minute. Um, take a picture, take a picture. Um, give, give me the oil for a minute. All right, stand up on the, stand up on the, um, mm -hmm. yes, I want you to stand up. The, God says the healing, I saw this one earlier today, um, he says the healing is when you can begin to see past the brokenness and see what they were called to be. You know what I'm saying? When you can see the door and begin to, in seeing the door, establish the position. Amen? See, because when all you can see is the, 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 the crutch, you can't see how it benefits you. Wow. Amen? Wow. You can't see how it benefits you, but you can see God's purpose and God's plan. What you want to do is, you want to um, remove the crutch and put an arm on you. You want to put an arm, you want to remove the crutch and put an arm on you. And then those who are with they can't see, you know, because we like to see, but we have to understand there's light and depth in the tongue. But then he say something real powerful. 
He says, speak those things or not as though they are. Yeah. He says, the problem is, stop calling her a stripper. Yeah. Stop calling her a be. Stop calling out a name. And begin to, as the one God said, speak. And I thought that was so funny because God says tonight, I want you to speak, man of God. And because from this day forward, from this point on, though Michelle, this is the elder, this is the elder, and now we know it as a man of God. But his wife today, we will um, we will speak and declare, and you won't call her Mr. Michelle, you from the day on, you will call her prophet. Hello! You will call her prophet. Um, we will establish her. We have the prophets pray for her. Amen. I'm going to have the prophets begin to pray for her because I'm not doing this because it's something I thought, it's something God told me to do. So I'm going to obey. But it's funny, but God wanted, it's funny, we came back to the house like, no, I wasn't in it. She said, I want it because it's one all the time. It's one thing to do it, it's another thing to understand why God is doing it. Because now God is saying, now that you've heard my word, right? And now that you know what I'm saying to you, and the woman of God is saying, speak to me. Well, open your mouth and begin to speak. So you're going to get, oh, y'all hear what I'm saying. God is saying, yeah. the women are saying, I need you to speak to me. I need to speak to my wife. I need to speak to my sister. I need to speak to my mom. I, they, when the place goes through, say, I, I need to, man, God, I need to. Because the problem is, see, the, 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 and God told me about this, man, God, too. There is a, there is a, there is a uh, witchcraft. There is rebellion that those who do not want you to speak to them. But God says, stop focusing on the ones who don't want. See, the problem is sometimes we spend too much time arguing with us about the ones who don't want to speak to you. But there are women who say, I need a man of God to speak to me. I want him to speak to me. I want him to speak to me. And if he tells me to sit down, sit down. If he tells me to sit up, I'm going to get up. If he tells me to hold the word, hold the word. I just need him to speak to me. So, as God establishes daughter, then I thought it was so funny. He said, "Okay, I bring the prophets, because I'm, 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 I'm an apostle." But see, so you gotta let the prophets impart the prophet, because when he came in the atmosphere of the apostle, the prophets, right? The prophets did the, the impartation, amen. So I'm gonna give the prophets time to um. I ask everybody to extend their hands. Stay focused, please. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, this Holy Spirit, anything you want to just lift your reference. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, God, for this being, this vessel that is called by you. God, we thank you. God, we honor you for the life that is her, God. We thank you, God, that the glory of God goes beyond a name, a title, God. But we even ask now, God, that you will cover the woman of God from the crown of her head to the soul of her feet, God. God, and while you're doing it, God, let the oil, God, that you have poured upon her, God. God, see out into her home, God, right now. Cover everything around her in the name of Jesus, God. Even now, God, as she continues to work and do what it is that you called her to do, God, the connectivity, even the example, God, that the man of God has displayed between she and her husband before the people, God. Let this be a continual elevation, God, in unity, God, because you are a covenant, God, God. This is on the Thank you, Jesus, God, because we're coming in agreement with your spirit, God, we also come in agreement with the head in her house, God, oh, with her yeah. husband, God, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, God, and we thank you right now, God, that this woman of God will be your mouthpiece, God, in the name, even I thank you now in the name of Jesus, God, even as I hear the name Deborah, God, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, God, God, I ask that, God, you will use this vessel to push God, to, to, to cry out and stand hey. out, God, even now at the mantle of the prophetic God, the oil, God, fall upon her now, God, God, that you would have your way, God, we speak now that there will be no backlash to it, but that her feet will be sturdy, 
planted, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that her hands will be found working, God, in the name of Jesus, that her ears will remain inclined to your voice, God, that her eyes will stay focused to the hill from which cometh our help, God, that her mind will remain meditated on you, God, those things that are above and not beneath. And even on today, God, we join in with the apostle, God. We join in with the prophet and the body of Christ, God. God, as we stretch the Lord and speak strength and endurance, God, as she come into covenant with this place, God, of elevation, God. And not just elevation, God, but acceptance, God, of what was already present, God. We just speak now that it is no longer laying down, but it is standing up today, God. It is stretching out in her today, God. You are filling her up with every ounce of what she needs to do what you have called her to do, God, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, God, we just come, we just thank you for what you are doing here today, God, for reestablishing and for a real new law right now. I, I anoint her feet right now, Father. I anoint her feet right now, Father. I anoint her feet right now, but for, so I bind up every demonic principality that wants to get it become weary, Lord. To become weary, Lord. So I pray right now that you can give us strength, Father. Give us strength, Lord. Give us strength to continue doing all of what you are predestined to do, Lord. Lord, let her not become weary and well known. Let, let her press, Lord. Let her press. Let her not turn back, Father. Let her not turn back. Let her press, so let her press, let, let her press, let her be about her father's business, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Stay. 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 Amen. 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 Adore first. Just like Elder is a son first. Yes. And I, I want to say, you know, the Bible says in the Testament, I, I, I've seen in the house. When the man of God says, baby, we're not going to do that right now. Or when the man of God said, no, I'm the one you buying a house. And you were saying, when the man of God said, no, we're going to wait. And God says, teach his doors to honor what God honors. Amen. Speak the word of God. And Lord, I pray, I pray that you will give us strength, gracious, and glorious life. Because let me tell you something. Submission is a beautiful Thing yes. in the yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Submission is God's plan of elevation. Amen. Submission is God's plan of elevation. And I thank God for what He's what He has done. Amen. What God is doing. Amen. Man of God, you ready? You ready? Amen. And this is this is how. Amen. This is how God wanted to, I saw this. This is how he wanted to bring this service to, he wanted to illustrate when men walk in the proper position, when people, when women respect and honor the way that God will establish it in his season. Your gift don't establish it. God will establish it and bear witness through, through his me and through the way. Why? Because the bottom line is just like Paul, Paul was anointed by God. Amen. Yeah. Oh, no, but Paul said he came, he came to Peter and them in, 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 in secret. He came up because he said, I gotta understand, I gotta be in alignment with what God yeah. is doing. But I don't want to think I'm running by myself. This is God. I, even though I'm sent to the Gentile, I'm sent to the Gentile, but this is one body. Yeah. This is one body. This one body, and I can trust God that when it's that time and season that God wants to anoint me and say, he, 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 he will acknowledge it before his body, amen. He will acknowledge it before his body, and guess what? When God acknowledges it before his body, people will honor it, honor it because it does not divide the body, as what as, as Pastor Bobby would say, he said, it extends it, yeah. it just simply extends it, amen. amen. So I thank God. And I thank God that, and I'm going to tell you to pray for her and her husband. Because I'm going to tell you something. See, the prophet will tell you, and the prophet will tell you, the way the world has presented the prophet, they, don't think, they think it's a glamour position. The prophet is some type of a glamour position, like it's almost like a, it's almost like a doggone um, soothsayer. You know what I'm saying? That you get in line, and they're going to they tell you everything you want. But the real prophets, the true ones that will speak the heart of God, Mm. Yeah, They're not gonna be liked. Come on, come on. You better go study Jeremiah. When God starts talking about prophets, 
It ain't Christmas time. It's for the time. It's for the time. Amen? Amen. It's for the time. Because I know this prophet right here, this prophet is saying, this man of God is hated. And, and people despise this man of God so greatly for telling people simply, let the word of God lead you. How can you be despised and rejected by telling people, let the word of God lead you? That's just point blank scripture. That's true prophecy. That's the point blank scripture. The Bible said, lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge no other. The Bible said, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Letting God lead you is letting truth lead you. Don't be impatient. Why? God can see what you cannot see. Come on. I told you, it was the uh, God had to show me, but I'm just, I had to repent. Because God had to show me, I'm a God had to show me what the man got. Because I was like, I went my hand all the way out. And God had to show me. He said something, because I remember one time, I'm going to give you this illustration. One, we, we, it was an illustration. Somebody was talking about insurance. And in the insurance, they were talking about, don't, God had to actually show it to me. He said, because um, the person said, well, Man, you should not have prayed to get insurance. You should not have to use a note to get insurance. The man of God never said, don't get insurance. You saw how people hear with their own heart. He never said, don't get insurance. He just said, let God lead you. Why? Let me tell you what God did. I said, okay, God, I need insurance. Come on, come on. I said, this is what God did. I go to work, God, I'm going to get insurance. My insurance in my card note was almost $700. Let me tell you what God did when I let God lead me. I said, okay, God. I go to work, it was around the same time uh, we hired Miriam. I'm sitting in my boss office. Let me tell you what God do when you, when you let me. I'm sitting in my office. Miriam said, hey, I don't know how we got on a conversation of this. She said, I got an agent for you. She said, call this agent. Okay. So I call the agent. She's a wrestler, but she's an agent. I was like, I know I don't call all the state. I'm casting to my 400 something phone number. I call the agent. I told her I'm going to show her two cars more. Aiden said, hundred and ninety nine. I thought they made a mistake. I said, she didn't she didn't tell me. I said, she didn't know what she's talking about. Then no he said, no, full coverage. This thing right here. And I only want to keep, I only want to keep, I want to keep. And remember, I was just paying for him. She said, no, a hundred and she went to, she said, I said, oh my God. <laughs> then I said, let me show you something else. I'm going to take your car. The one you have. Now watch this. I'm going to tell you what he did. Let me show what God did when you let God lead you. The black car I had was like five thousand miles a month, and it was so old. It had over two hundred thousand miles. On. My mom asked me months ago to take over her car. I was like, I can't take over your car. That's not. I don't even like your car. <laughs> she said, Take the car. I said, Okay. I said, No. So we saw God did it. The black car um, went out. Mm. Engine went out. So when it went out, but I still owe five thousand. My mom called, you know what I'm saying? My mom said, pick a car. My mom had a 2017, she had 27, 25,000 miles on it. My mom said, God said, tell your mom, my mom only owed $10,000 left. He said, tell your mom, charge you $16,000. Take the five, pay off your car, now pay $209 a month. Wow. I did what God told me to do. I went almost from 700. To less than $400 for my car insurance. Wow. That's wow. why he says, let God lead you. Yeah. It's not that you don't need this. Yes, God knows. The man ain't got anything. Don't let me. God know you need a home. You know, but when you consult him and let him lead you, guess what? He'll give you faith. Come on. Come on. First, well, I need this. You just hop out there and start doing stuff. I said, okay. Since you ain't consulting me, I. Because you know God will jump. Yeah. You don't consult him? I'm like, what can you do? I'll wait. Yeah, there you go. And then when you're sitting there crying because you're working two jobs to pay a car, listen to me. And then talking about God, God didn't do that. He didn't do that. Because the Bible said the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. You got a whole lot of sorrow in that situation. Oh, yeah. he's, your, he's your what? Father. Father. What father does not want to help his son get the best situation? Right, or don't get the best situation. But he ain't going to force you to acknowledge you. Right. Amen? You know, Lord, oh God. Walk in and hear And I'm going to tell you what he told you. He said, look not at their faces. 
<laughs> said, I know. I walked in the prophetic for years. Oh, he said, don't look at their faces. Why? Because you start stuttering, God gonna get you. Come on, come on. Because they don't look like what you're saying is true. Because you look at their faces, they look like you telling them A, B, C. They look like what you're saying ain't true. But I said, don't look at their faces. Say what I say, go about your business. You don't, when, when you walk in the prophetic, you're not looking for a response. That's how you tell them false prophets. They're looking for you to get some emotional. You say, well, God said, don't look for a response. Why? A response doesn't have a response does not advocate what you say is true. Right, right. God told you. That's what makes you know it's true. Word is the word. Amen. Amen. I want, I'm a, I'm, can we give? Can we? Can we thank God for the man of God? Amen. Yeah, yeah. That door won't be open. And like, man, it's about God. It's about the, those. That's why I told the man of God, I said, man, go do what you do. Why? Because God is going to flood yes, the yes. churches. He going to flood his real churches. Yes, he going to flood his church. Why? Because his true churches are going to, they're not going to produce no Baptists. No. They're not going to produce no Pentecostal. No. God said, no more. God said, everything that man has established to try to divide me, I'm coming out of. He said, I'm breaking loose on that. He said, I'm breaking loose on everything that man tried. Like the whole thing is, I'm breaking loose on He says, my word says, my hope is in the word. And the word says, I came among my own, but they receive me not. But for those who receive the seed, gave he power to make them sons. That ain't that, and that scripture, it doesn't say, I know some people like to miss it, right? Right? We interpret that. That scripture says sons, not sons and daughters. Why? Because there's one. He's going back. He said, I want the one and daughters. He's going back to what? The son rolling up to mama. The mama rolling up to real. And the real rolling back up to the dust. And the dust rolling back into the hands of the, into the creator. God, you are our creator. Amen. You are our creator. And we're going to trust in you. Amen. So let me say this to you, especially those who it don't matter if you married or single. The shaking coming. If you single, it'll come into it. It'll come. It, am I right? It'll come with your mama. It'll come with your family. Amen. It ain't. It don't matter if you married. It's gonna come. Why? Because God got to know. Can He trust you with something so precious? Amen. I said this today. Man of God, I say this to you, Merv. I say that I'm because even with the young men, Merv and and and, and, and Chuck and actually, I'm being ready with a lot of the young men. Why? Um, because we need to make sure we pour it into our young soldiers yes. that they yeah. do not get up off that cross or move away from when it's up. But let me tell you one, one, one thing. Let me tell you what I told God one day when I was having all those thoughts. And I was like, I said, God, I said, say you might well stop. Because you might have to kill me to stop Come me from serving God. In other words, you might have to you might have to, and I know he can't take me out. I said, that's how far we're gonna go with this. Yeah. Because I've been tried. I've been tried by God. I have I've lost everything. I've boom, boom, boom. And yet, my anybody that know possible, I'm gonna keep pushing. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna keep pushing. Even if you love me. You, you loving me ain't gonna stop me from pushing. Yeah. I don't need, I, I know in whom I believe and I know whom I serve. I boast in the Lord. Amen. For he is my strength. He is the rock of my salvation where I shall not be moved. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you something. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta, people say, like, don't pray. No, people say stuff, pray stuff, man. God. People say, you don't pray because if you pray, God gonna do it. Let me tell you something. You ain't gotta pray. God gonna do it anyway. Hey. 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 You ain't gotta ask for it. He will break your house down to get his purpose. He will shake the very foundation. Why? Because you his. Come on, come and he, is, he will shake it and break it down to get you back in position. Why? Because today, right now, let me tell you something. If you're not willing to lose everything for God, come on, come on. Jesus. God I can't use you. Jesus. Why? Because you're in a time right now. No side deals. No side deals. If you, you do, the Bible, do you know if you love friends more than you love God? That's our kingdom. You're not even fit for the kingdom. Why? 
What if your friends go left? Come on, right. come on. True love for your wife. I'm about to say something. I want y'all to grab this. True love for your wife or your husband is not based on an emotional thing. Come on, come on. It's not based on you doing everything they think you need to do for them. Yeah. True love. I'm gonna tell you what God gave me. True love is your obedience to God. Amen. Your obedience. The difference between the first Adam and the second Adam was simply obedience to God. Amen. One caused his wife to live. Another one caused his wife to perish because they chose not to be obedient to God. Be obedient to God. Amen. Amen. We love you. We, we, man, we, we, change, we, we, we get ready to shift. God is raising y'all up. Amen. This is a discipleship class. You don't go here. Me and Michelle was talking about that. Remember Michelle? You not come here to become a good member of no church. Come on. My God. We build and shape you. We got a two-fold process in this class right here. You're going to sit down and learn the word. Then you go on them highways and has to be trained how to operate in that word. Come on. Yeah. And then God, not us. Am I right? Well, God. As he lived, will send you. Because why? The truth be told, assignments are given, but life is lived every day. Amen. Hear what I just said to you. Assignments are given, but ministry is about life, and life is living every day. Stop looking for a ministry to live life. Let your life speak that you have been in the presence of God. Amen. God is good. Come on, let's give him a praise. Come on, give him all that praise. I'm going to have, 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 gracious and heavenly father god we thank you for who you are we thank you for your word we thank you for the word carrier we thank you for the teacher and tonight god we thank you for these your people count and not robbery to come in and eat of a good word god we thank you for the fellowship on tonight god we ask that the word will be planted on good ground god and any and everything that will try to intervene from the word taking root god we cancel that assignment god and we speak that it will produce the harvest of integrity god the harvest of morality God, the harvest of obedience, God, and most definitely, we speak that it will produce a harvest of love, God, because of your love for us and our love for your people, God. We ask that you will cover and keep us in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We pray under one body, one sound, and one accord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to say this too, on the 19th, we have an, um, we're going we to give honor where our name is due. I want us to be a part of it. Put on the count on the 19th that um, I'm, I'm going to have a media team. I'm going to get the information from, um, um, from Crawford. They're going to do a celebration on, on, on his church. So we want to, if you can, join us to do a celebration on the 19th and celebrate the man of God. I want us to be there to celebrate with him. Amen. 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 Man, this is his brother. I mean, God, he has a church uh, building to open up and teaching disciples. And where is it? Um, Carolina, South, Carolina. South Carolina. God gave him keys to a building in South Carolina to raise disciples in South Carolina. You know how to raise sons. Amen. You know how to raise sons. Amen. My brother, you know how to raise sons. Amen. When you know how to, uh, you know how to raise sons, right? When you know how to raise sons, we don't. When you leave out our classroom, am I right, Pop? When you leave out this classroom, when God puts you in, you're gonna raise sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. You will not go back into religion. You're gonna raise sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. Because sons and daughters have a relationship with God. Amen. God is good. Okay, we don't. <laughs>